Are the Palestinians in Gaza suffering a biblical judgment? That's a tough question to raise, especially in our culture in these times, but I think it's one that we have to talk about. Hi, this is Joel Rosenberg in Jerusalem with the Rosenberg Report, and I want to talk about a very sensitive topic. Let's just say this right up front. I don't believe that Israel is engaged in genocide against the Palestinians, but there has been a lot of suffering. There's no question. And I think that Christians uh, around the world need to be honest. There's been a lot of suffering of the people of Gaza. That doesn't mean that Israel is trying to make civilians suffer, not at all. Israel has done more in this war to protect Palestinian civilians in Gaza than any other military in history. And that's not just something I say lightly. This is something that major, well-renowned uh, war historians have uh, studied analyzed and concluded. In fact, Prime Minister Netanyahu, uh, in his speech to a joint session of Congress uh, that previously this summer, uh, he actually cited uh, one of the world's uh, leading experts, one of the American leading experts on war history to say that no nation in history has done more to protect civilians in Gaza than the Israeli military. But that's not to say that there hasn't been terrible destruction. There has been terrible destruction. In fact, when I went into Gaza with the IDF to report for All Israel News and for the Rosenberg Report, the level of destruction that I saw was something I'd never seen before. And I've been to war zones. I've been to Iraq four times during that war. I was in Afghanistan during that war. And I've never seen that level of destruction. I'm not saying there hasn't been levels of destruction in you know, every war and in places in Iraq and Afghanistan that I wasn't in, but I'm just saying my own personal view was this was apocalyptic. It just seemed like every house was either leveled or destroyed. And that's because, as I reported at the time, weapons, bombs, uh, booby traps uh, were being held or were being stored in, or, or wired in every single apartment building that, that Israel found. Um, and yes, they tried to get a lot of those weapons out so that terrorists couldn't come back later and get them, but sometimes they just had to bomb and destroy much or all of the building because it was too dangerous to send soldiers in to try to undo every booby trap and get every um, sort of ticking time bomb, as it were, out of every single building in Gaza. So there's tremendous destruction there. And of course, there's been a great deal of uh, the loss of human life in Gaza. Now, in my view, based on the analysis of, 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 the, of the data that I've seen, most of the people that have died in Gaza are terrorists. But terrorists don't wear military outfits. They don't wear uniforms, right? They, they wear civilian clothes. So it's easy for Hamas to report the deaths of their own terror colleagues as civilian casualties. So this is why you see these numbers I don't even know for sure that those numbers are accurate, but the but the large, you know, the vast amount of majority of those casualty figures, whatever the final numbers are, those are terrorists. That's who Israel is targeting. Tragically, some civilians are caught in harm's way. Why? Because because the whole Hamas strategy is to embed themselves behind women and children, inside hospitals, inside mosques, inside schools, and that's. That's a war crime. It's a war crime to fire a rocket or missile from a civilian location. And then of course Hamas is firing at civilian locations in Israel. Both war crimes, double war crimes every time it happens. Now there's been so much criticism of Israel because there's so much destruction and there's so much loss of life in Gaza. All that in my view is on Hamas, okay? That's Hamas's responsibility. That's what they want. Israel's tried to minimize it, but still it has happened. And we as Christians need to acknowledge that it has been brutal. It's been hard. Uh, again, not because Israel hasn't tried. And as you know, because we've reported on it, uh, Israel's done a lot of targeted assassinations of senior Hamas leaders, as well as Hezbollah leaders, uh, without taking out any civilians. When Israel finally found and killed Yahya Sinwar, the head of Hamas in Gaza, no civilians died. When the number two guy in Gaza, Mohammed Def, the military strategist for Hamas, when he was killed, no civilians were killed. These were targeted assassinations and they were clean, as it were. When Israel killed the number one guy in the whole world who runs Hamas, Ismail Haniyeh, 
in a villa, a VIP uh, government-owned villa in Iran, in Tehran, no civilians were killed. But the question remains, is the death and destruction going on in Gaza, is that actually biblical judgment? And my answer is that it is. Now, that may bother you, and I would understand that, but, but hear me out. Genesis chapter 12, in that very famous passage that describes what God, you know, what Bible scholars call God's covenant to Abraham, the Abrahamic covenant, God says something very specific, right? He calls Abram out from the nations. He's going to send Abram and his wife Sarah to the Holy Land, to, to Israel. It wasn't called Israel yet. But that's where he was going to send him. And God says, I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to give you a land. I'm going to make you a great people. I'm going to make you a great nation. And your nation is going to be, your people are going to be a blessing to all the families of the earth. Right? Because the Messiah is going to come through the line of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah, David, and so forth. But first, I want to say that in Israel's darkest hour, a lot of people are asking me, how can we help? How can we support Israel in its time of greatest need and be part of that biblical mandate found in Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, where God is speaking of blessing those who bless the people of Israel, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Well, a great way to do it is to partner with our sponsor of today's edition of the Rosenberg Report, Artsa. Go to artsabox.com. Use the discount promo code RR15, Rosenberg Report 15, to get a 15% discount off the price of your Artsa box. They are literally a taste of the Holy Land, and they come directly to your home in a beautiful box that contains potpourri, a range of all kinds of products made in Israel by all kinds of Israeli artisans, entrepreneurs, and small business owners. You're going to love them for yourself, for your family, and they make great gifts as well. Check it out. Go to artsabox.com. Use the discount code RR15, Rosenberg Report 15. And I have no doubt that you'll love these boxes, these arts boxes, as much as Lynn and I do. And God says, those who bless you, Israel and the Jewish people, God says, I will bless. But those who curse you, I will curse. And as you look through the, the totality of scriptures, what you find is God is very patient with the people that hate Israel and the Jewish people, but there is a point of no return. There is a judgment that comes. And we see that. We see that prophesied and we see it play out over and over and over again throughout the Old Testament. Now, Israel gets judged too. When Israel rejects God, when he says, when, when, the, when the Jewish people, when the people of Israel say, I'm not going to listen to God. Mm, I'm not listening. I'm not going to read the Bible. I'm not going to follow what God says. I'm not going to live like he calls me to live. And when the Messiah comes, I don't care. I don't want to know him. I don't want to follow him. There's a, there's, there is a, uh, there's a cost to that. Okay, there, there is a, uh, there are consequences to rejecting God and his word. That's true for Jews. It's true for everybody. And what's happened is the, the Palestinians of Gaza have cursed Israel and the Jewish people every day, over and over again, for more than 76 years. Okay, even before the state of Israel was born on May 14, 1948, the Palestinians of Gaza were cursing the Jewish people and cursing the state of Israel. Now, the Palestinians of Gaza are not the only ones, but I'm just focusing on them right now. Now, God loves the Palestinians of Gaza. I want to be super clear about that. And he wants everybody to know him and to follow him, to, to study his word, to follow his son, the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, to be forgiven of their sins, to uh, be adopted into God's family. And that's available to every Israeli, every Palestinian, every Lebanese, every American, every Chinese, every person around the planet. We read in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, meaning everybody in it, that he, God the Father, gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him, in Yeshua, in Jesus, in his death on the cross and his resurrection from the dead, to pay the penalty for our sins, whoever believes in him, in Jesus, shall not perish, the word says, but shall have everlasting life. In other words, perishing means dying physically and then dying spiritually. Away from God, in hell, forever and ever and ever and ever with no way of escape. That's one option. The other option is to say yes to God, his word, his son, and to accept the free gift of salvation through Jesus' death and resurrection. And then you get to go to heaven, 
adopted into God's family, and be in heaven forever and ever and ever and ever, and ever without any fear of, of, uh, of judgment. That God takes away eternal judgment if we say yes to Jesus' death on the cross as the covering for our sins. In other words, we can pay our sins ourselves, or we can have Jesus pay them. We need Jesus to pay them. But that's eternal judgment. But even on the earth, God says there are going to be consequences. If you curse Israel and the Jewish people, you are violating Genesis 12, 3. And there are consequences. And if you keep doing it again and again and again and again, and you're chronically doing it, and you have no interest in changing, you're going to face judgment. God says, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. And the peop- most of the people of Gaza, not all, but most of the people of Gaza have cursed Israel for 76 plus years. They elected a government. After Israel pulled all soldiers and all civilians out of Gaza in 2005, did the Palestinians build a Palestinian paradise? They did not. In 2006, heading into 2007, the Palestinian people of Gaza held an election and they elected a genocidal, bloodthirsty, wicked terror organization called Hamas. And what did Hamas do? They started attacking Israel. And all the international, well, most of the international aid, a great deal of international aid that came in to help rebuild Gaza, Hamas used it to build terror tunnels and to build rocket factories and to build rocket launchers and to make ammunition and guns. And they imported weapons through the Egyptian border. And then they launched all these attacks for almost 20 years and preparing for October 7th. God will not be mocked. The scriptures are clear. If that's your attitude towards Israel and the Jewish people, you will face consequences. You will face judgment. And we're not even talking about just judgment in the afterlife. We're talking about judgment in this life. And that is what's happening to the Palestinian people in Gaza. Now, that doesn't mean God doesn't love the Palestinians. He does. It doesn't mean that we as Christians shouldn't have compassion on the Palestinian people and pray for them to wake up and reject Hamas, reject radical Islamism, reject this life of terror and cursing of Israel and the Jewish people, and decide two things. Number one, it's time to live in peace, side by side with Israel. And number two, it's time to reject Islam and come to faith in biblical New Testament Christianity, to, to listen to and receive the gospel and say yes to Jesus and no to radical Islamism. Yes to Jesus, no to jihad. By rejecting violence against Israel, you're going to have peace and quiet in Gaza. And Gaza could be built into a Palestinian paradise, living side by side in unity with Israel. But you've got to reject jihad in this life. And then you don't want to live a nice life in this life and then go to hell when you die. That's why you've got to receive Jesus. You don't have to re- reject jihad, but there are consequences. And you don't have to accept Jesus but there are consequences. And I don't believe Israel is under judgment right now, but the Bible says judgment comes to every nation. There will be a day of reckoning for all the things we do right and wrong. Israel's not facing that right now. We're facing a hard year, don't get me wrong, and we're in the second year of this hard, very hard season, the darkest hour in modern Israeli history. But we're not under judgment right now. What Israelis are suffering and struggling with is that we, most Israelis have forgotten that there's a shepherd. They've forgotten Psalm 23. They've forgotten the writings of our greatest king and shepherd, who was David, right? And David wrote in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. So I don't need to worry about anything. I don't need to want anything. I don't, I won't be in, in I won't lack for anything. No, I won't lack for security. I won't lack for food. I won't lack for a relationship with God. If I remember that God is my shepherd, the Lord is my shepherd. That's what the Psalm 23 is about. But many, I think most Israelis have forgotten that. They don't believe there's a shepherd whose name is the Lord. Most Israelis either don't care or they've rejected him. No, but that's one of the reasons we as Christians need to pray that they, that Jew, my people, Jewish people, would return to the scriptures and discover the truth of, 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 of Psalm 23 and get excited about it and say, I want to know the shepherd. I want to read about the shepherd. I, wanna, I want the shepherd to guard me and protect me and feed me. But when you don't pay attention or you reject or you ignore uh, your shepherd, you're, it's because you're forgetting that there are ravenous wolves trying to attack you and destroy you. Most Israelis forgot, sadly. We were so safe and so comfortable on October 6, 2023, we didn't see October 7th coming. 
Not at the prime minister level, not at the military level, not the intelligence level, not in the society level. And we have paid some consequences, some very painful consequences. That's what we're going through. We're going through the consequences of forgetting about a shepherd, our shepherd, God himself. The Palestinians are not suffering that. They're paying the consequences of rejecting the truth of God's love for Israel and the Jewish people and cursing Israel. There are consequences and they are facing judgment. I pray that they will re re repent from these, uh, the, this life of cursing, this life of jihad, and they will, they will say, okay, okay, enough. We want to live in peace. That's what I'm praying for. And not just peace with Israel, but peace with God the Father through his son, Jesus the Messiah. It's sad for me to say that Palestinians are suffering judgment in, in Gaza, but it's the truth. And you may not believe that. You may not want to hear that. Okay, go study the scriptures and assess it for yourself. Palestinian society, in the mosques, in the media, in the government of Hamas, in Gaza, since 20, 2007, can you really say that it, it didn't directly attack and violate Genesis chapter 12? You can't. But go study it for yourself. And then if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, if you're a Christian, pray. Pray for the people of Gaza, that they will realize they're under judgment, but realize that God wants to offer them a way of escape, a way of turning, a way of getting out of this mess and having a much better life here and for eternity. This is Joel Rosenberg in Jerusalem for the Rosenberg Report.